you're all well. So I am super excited to be able to share this project with you. Now it is a knife blade project and it's also my first shareable project. So it will be available in the Cricut community and I will link to it in the description below. Now I have done all the workings out for you. This was actually harder to do than it should have been. And myself and my friend Laura, we were toing and froing over this for days. We were both working so hard to figure it out and really tweak it. And actually, it shouldn't have been that hard. Sometimes you just can't see, is it the trees for the wood or the wood for the trees? But anyway, whatever the saying is, you just can't see the way forward. And then all of a sudden, it hits you. Now these are exact measurements, everything fits perfectly, so if you do try and resize it, you'll have to be aware that they may not sit correctly. The reason being is these tabs, they are all set for the 2mm chipboard and if you start messing around with them, it is going to change the fit slightly, which is why I've done several different sizes for you. So if we go to our layers panel, you see that we've got a 8cm squared cube, we've got a 9cm one, we've got a 10cm one, we've got 12cm, so there is plenty of size choice for you there. As I say, these are worked to an exact measurement and they are for the Cricut Heavy Chipboard, which is 2mm. Now, if you do want to know how to create these yourselves, how to do the mathematics so that you can make them for any material, please do comment below. And if enough of you are interested, then I will do a tutorial on it. So when you open the project, this is what you will see. You've got all your different sizes, so you can choose those. Now they are currently grouped. All you need to do is ungroup it, and then you can just hide or delete the writing. That's completely up to you. You'll also see that I've color coded it. So the yellow squares are the bottom and the top. Then we've got two red sides and two blue sides. Now you may decide that you want to just cut them all on one mat. You can do that. You'll just need to obviously change the colours on them. So just to let you know that the 8cm one is the only one that you can have everything all on one mat. You cannot do that with the others. So with the 9cm piece you can have four pieces on your 11 inch chipboard and then you'll have to do two on another piece. The same with your 10 centimeter one, you'll have to do four on one chipboard piece and you can do two on another. And it's exactly the same with the 12 centimeter one. You'll need to do four on one piece of the Cricut two millimeter chipboard at 11 by 11, and then two pieces on another separate piece. So you can see that I've put everything in one color because I want it all on one mat. What we're going to do is we're actually going to cut our chipboard out first and construct our box, and then we're going to come back in and do the photos. Now if you wanted to actually cut your chipboard with the photos on, you can do that. You can do it either using printable photo paper or printable vinyl. I'm going to use printable vinyl today. If you're going to use photo paper, then you are going to want to modge podge it onto your chipboard and leave it to dry. However, because we're working with multiple photos and we've got different kind of sides, I personally find it easier to do it afterwards. So I just want to talk to you very quickly about the timings of these. So with this one, which is the 8 centimeter one, the whole cut, so the whole piece, will take 1 hour and 32 minutes in total. The 9 centimeter one is a total cut of 1 hour and 35 minutes, that's to cut everything. The 10 centimeter one is a total cut of 1 hour and 37 minutes, again this is all with the Cricut Heavy Chipboard at 2 millimeters. 
And the 12 centimetre one will take a total cut time of one hour and 42 minutes. So just wanted to let you all know that before you start cutting. So you know exactly how long it's going to take you. So we're then going to go to make it. You can see it's all come up on one mat. Now our Cricut chipboard is 11 inches by 11 inches. Now I just want to come in and move them all slightly. Now the reason for this is obviously we have to put masking tape all around all four sides of our chipboard or any material when we're working with our knife blade. And so I just find it better personally to move everything slightly inwards. Once I'm happy, I can then go to continue. I'm then going to go to browse all materials. I'm going to go to artboard and I'm going to go to heavy chipboard two millimeters. We're then ready to go and sort our mat out and add our knife blade in. So as always, when working with the knife blade, we've got our purple mat. We've also got our Cricut Heavy Chipboard at two millimeters. Now I get mine from Crafts You Love and I will link to it in the description below. I always go in with my fabric brayer first and just really, really stick it down to my mat. We're then going to add masking tape to all four sides and this will help to keep your chipboard in place. Once I've placed my masking tape all the way round, I like to go back in with my fabric brayer and I not only concentrate on my chipboard but also on my masking tape as well because I want to make sure that that is nice and adhered to my mat. So you can see that it's now cut, so we're just going to come in and remove all our masking tape. So I'm just going to come in and lift it off my mat. And I'm then just going to push through and gently remove each of my pieces. So I've then got my top and my bottom pieces. I've got two of my sides and then I've got my other two sides as well. So we're going to start with the bottom piece. We're just going to come in and slot the first piece in. We're then going to come in with the next piece. We're then going to come in with the next piece. And then we can put the last side on. And you'll see that they fit beautifully. Now I'm not going to glue them, but you could glue them if you wanted to. They all slot perfectly. I don't see the need to glue them, but you can if you want to. We've then got our lid, so we're just going to come in and just gently place that and you'll see we've then got our lovely cube. So we've cut our chipboard out and we've constructed our box now so now we need to do our photos. Now I have found that it's actually easier to do the photos after you've cut your chipboard now there are so many options with this in terms of what you can do with the photos. You can come in and you can slice them so the, they're exactly the same as each of your sides. You can just make them the complete size of it. So for example, this one's eight centimeters. So you can just make your photo an eight centimeter square. You can make it smaller. You can make it smaller and put a frame on it. It is completely up to you. You can use photo paper, you can use printable vinyl. I'm actually going to use printable vinyl today, but I have used the photo paper, and all I've done to stick it on is use some Mod Podge, and it 
sticks beautifully. So to upload our photos, we're just going to go to upload. We're going to go to upload image. We're going to browse and then we can find each of our photos that we want to upload. Once we've selected it, we can then save it as a complex image and we're going to go to continue. We can then go to continue again and we're going to save as a print and cut. Once we've uploaded our image, we can then select it and we can insert the image into our canvas. So on this occasion, I've just sliced an 8 by 8 square into my photo. So they're going to sit over my whole entire side. So you're not going to be able to see the joins on this one. But it's completely up to you how you want it to look, how you want to do it. That's the great thing about this. You can have a play and you can work out how you want it to be. Now, obviously, with a print and cut, you can only do it with a certain size. So it has to be 9.25 inches by 6.75 inches. So you can see that I've placed them all next to each other. So if we highlight, you'll see our width is fine, but our length is not. So we can only have four of these photos and then we'll have to do two separately. Again, you'll have to play with it, work out the sizes, work out what you want to do with it. Everyone is going to be different. The way you do the photos is going to be different. So you will want to have a play. Now, if we just leave these like this and we go to make it, they're all going to cut separately because they're different images. So with these four, I'm just going to highlight them. You can see they're well within the print and cut parameters and we're just going to attach them together. With these two, I'm just going to place them side by side. And again, I'm going to highlight and I'm going to attach them. So when we go on to our make it in a second, they will cut how we've attached them together. So we're then going to go to make it and you'll see we've got our first print and cut and then we've got our second. So we can then go to continue. Now I am using printable Cricut vinyl today. So the first thing I want to do is send to printer and it will need to go to my inkjet printer. Now, as always, you do have the option with the bleed. So if you leave the bleed on, when you print, it will be slightly fuzzy around the edges. That's okay. It will cut them correctly. However, I choose to have the bleed off. The other thing that if you've got the bleed on, you will need to make sure you've got a nice space in between things. So I'm just going to turn my bleed off and I'm going to go and print them. So here we've got the Cricut printable vinyl. It's got a white side and a gridded side. Obviously, we don't want to print on the gridded side. Now that they've printed, I can go to browse all materials. I've come down to vinyl and I'm going to choose printable vinyl. Now, when I used my photo paper, I just used a Kodak photo paper and I cut it on medium cardstock and that cut it fine. But as always, you want to do test cuts if you're working with products you haven't used before. But as I say, we're using the Cricut printable vinyl today and it cuts beautifully on the printable vinyl setting. Once it's printed, we're going to place our printable vinyl on a blue mat. Now, I do advise going in with a fabric brayer or you can use a squidgy, but I suggest that you cover it in felt because you do not want to scratch away any of your ink. So this is all cut. Now you can see that we've got some residue here, some leftover pieces. So I'm just going to get my scissors because I can use this again. I'm then just going to get my weeding tool and I'm just going to grab a corner and I'm just going to gently peel away. Now because it's inkjet, I would advise if you're going to use transfer tape to leave it for a good 15 minutes to make sure it's fully dried. 
I'm not going to use transfer tape today, I'm just going to manually place it. So that's my first piece placed. So I'm just going to use my fingers today, so I'm just going to gently lift it up. But as they say, you can use transfer tape if you want to, or you can use tweezers. It's completely up to you. Work out the positioning. If I'm not happy, I'm just going to peel it. And it just goes on there beautifully.